See, distractions, gone. <laughs> So on the first day of 2020, I had this brilliant idea to photograph everything in black and white for the rest of the year. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> Okay, maybe it wasn't that stupid because I actually learned a lot about my photography and I just wanted to challenge myself and see if I can live without color for a whole year because there are so many great black and white photographers out there and in the past all these legends and, and maybe it's because we are used to seeing black and white film photography and we associate black and white with proper photography. So, so one takeaway I have from this one year black and white experience is that I think I became very confident at photographing in black and white. It kind of feels like getting the black belt in uh, martial arts and I don't think many of you know this but I actually have a, a third degree black belt in Taekwondo and everyone starts with a white belt right and then you have to try a lot of things, you jump a lot, you have to gain a lot of experience and become better and stronger, faster. Then when you come close to the black belt you usually think okay I just need to become even stronger and even faster and that is partly true but it's more about becoming wiser and more intelligent and calm and certain about what you're doing and I kind of feel like limiting myself to black and white made me appreciate and focus more and have more intention when I shoot black and white and by the way isn't it cool how foggy it is today fog is always so nice when you shoot in black and white it's like it's like instant fine art okay let's do a little recap of 2020 because as we all know 2020 didn't start all doom and gloomy in the beginning. So in January 2020, I flew to London to film with Sean Tucker for my GR project episode. And Sean brought me to all of his favorite locations. And his style of photography is very different from mine. He focuses on light and shadows. And, and it's a little more graphic than my photography. I focus a lot on people. So I already had to adapt a little bit. And black and white just seemed perfect for you know, his style of photography. And then after the trip in London, there wasn't much going on. February was very quiet, but then March came and everything went down to shit. <laughs> and it was for sure a challenging time, not going out to take photos. And I went on a few walks and I'm just going to share a few photos I took uh, during the time of isolation. How suitable was black and white for that, huh? And then there came a time where people started to protest and go out on the street to uh, demonstrate against the measures. And that was a very interesting time because uh, Bella and I, we stumbled upon these people meditating on the ground and suddenly my photography became more journalistic again. I think there are two kind of street photographers. There are the ones that want to express themselves through their photography. They look for impressive compositions, photographs with a lot of impact. And it's mostly about single images and it's more about shapes and lines. And then there's this kind of street photographer who is more like a photojournalist, someone who want to document the state of society. And it's not so much about that one single image. It's more about building like a body of work that tells a story from a specific time. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I enjoy doing both. But there's a reason why I only saw one type of street photographer on the street uh, in 2020. And it was at that time in spring 2020 when I was covering these protests, when I questioned the reasoning for documenting something in black and white. And you know how people say that black and white is timeless? And that is such a nice quality for street photography when you document and capture the mundane of everyday life because people can relate to the photograph and it, 
And it's nice to have a timeless photograph that, you know, stands the test of time. Do I, did I say time enough? <laughs> but what if I don't want it to be timeless? If I want to capture something in the most realistic way and have the most information possible, then getting rid of color gets rid of so much information. For example, when people are waving flags and flags are usually in, in color, right? If you capture that in monochrome, then you miss so much out of the information. What nationalities are these people? Yeah, I, I don't know. It was I was really struggling in, in spring and summer um, if it's really a smart idea to shoot everything in black and white. If we accept that color, that, that photography describes what's in front of the camera, then description is the resource. So I wanted all the description, not just part of the description. Yeah. And, and I think that's what tilted the argument for me towards, towards color. But on the other hand, black and white is great for you know, expressions and, and focusing on the emotions. And yeah, as you can see, I, I wasn't really sure if that was all very, a very good idea. <coughs> Black and white update, it's May 2020 and uh, I have to say I had my ups and downs since I started this challenge but I'm pretty comfortable now shooting black and white and uh, Bello's here because he also shoots black and white almost, almost inclusive. Yeah. Uh, what is, why do you shoot black and white? Um, I think to me it's more appealing, it's just an aesthetic choice, but it also has practical aspects. I see better in black and white, like mm -hmm. contrast and forms and... Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I don't think that I'm good in color. I don't, uh -huh. I don't like my color images. I try to always use a black and white filter on my GS3 and I shoot uh, HP5 on my film camera. And uh, whenever I get my film developed and I look at this and I scan it, you know, it always looks so beautiful in black and white and because I don't see the color version, you know, I accept it mm -hmm. as a photograph and yeah. I don't want to change it. Exactly. But in digital, you see the color version and you're like, ah, yeah. you know, what should I do? I had this. Am I Alan Schaller or am I, you know, Steve McCurry? I don't know. <laughs> it's, there's, there's temptation, you know, when you shoot color. So, uh, yeah, maybe a tip would be to not see your photos in color when you shoot in black and white. Not, don't give you any, you know, chance to, to see the color version, so you don't get distracted. Yeah, that's so far my update for May 2020. What caused you to choose color as opposed to black and white for street photography? Um, so many great black and white photographers. Just <laughs> so many great ones. Yeah, I mean, you just look, down, you look through the history of, of photography, street photography, and they're all so good. And it's just like, oh man, I can't. Okay, so that was the first half of my one year black and white challenge. Um, now, before we move on and talk about the second half of the year, uh, let's talk about some basics. What are the benefits of black and white? You probably heard a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about on uh, numerous uh, blog articles and YouTube videos, but, but let's sum it up uh, real quick. So, black and white obviously strips down uh, any color. Um, and color is often attached to an emotion. For example, the color red, uh, we often associate red with uh, love, uh, warm, fire, and you know, you have all these feelings, emotions attached to color. Without that, um, you rely solely on shapes. Um, 
I would say it also depends on your experience in life, you know, how you lived your life because you might react different to certain colors than other people. You might have noticed I'm going in, in circles because this street is so empty and nice. Yeah, another um, characteristic of black and white is that um, images can be mysterious. They evoke a lot of imagination. Black and white can also help eliminate distractions in the background, for example, very bright colors. I ran a workshop in 2019 in Japan that I named uh, Making Sense of Chaos, uh, which was all about this topic, how to eliminate distractions. For example, this is a place called Dotonbori in Osaka and look at all these colors. It's so distracting, but if we turn this into black and white, see how less distracting it got? It's still noisy as hell, but I think you got the point. See, distractions, gone. <laughs> and yes, I traveled to Japan to prove this point. <laughs> okay, on a totally different side note, um, on my way here to the city, uh, I found a little mystery package. So this was laying on, uh, on a bench at my bus stop and it just said, you know, take it, take it with you. So I just took it with me and um, a little, I'm a little scared. Hopefully it's not someone's finger. Huh? Okay, so we have some chocolate and a little uh, letter. <laughs> so random. Dear Finder, great that I was... Great that I was picked up. Where are you going? To work? To school? To a good friend? How nice it is to know where you are going. Huh? Hi. Hi, hi. Uh, ich hab keine, nur Karte, Karte. This is what always happens. You always get disrupted by some drug addicts. What's in the box? You might be wondering if I ever considered uh, using a monochrome camera. And to be honest, uh, I actually considered saving up for a Leica Q2 monochrome. And I actually did shoot a Leica Q2 monochrome uh, ad for Leica um, here in Hamburg with uh, Siegfried Hansen. Mein Name ist Siegfried Hansen. Ich lebe und arbeite in Hamburg und ich fotografiere im Bereich der Streetfotografie. 2002 habe ich durch Zufall eine Ausstellung von André Ketesch gesehen und die hat mich so sehr beeindruckt, dass ich mein Leben änderte und Fotograf werden wollte. Which was perfect, uh, because I was already in the mindset of shooting in black and white and then I filmed the whole uh, commercial in black and white. Uh, actually, I shot it on my X-H1 using the Fujifilm Acros film simulation and it was perfect, um, yes. So I had the chance to use the Q2 monochrome, um, just a few snapshots. And to be honest, I, I think it's not worth it. Um, Obviously, it's the high natural sharpness and the clear detail of the images. And you already can see the sharpness and the details here in that it's image. beautiful. Increase in sharpness and na in natural sharpness. Because what I want, what I would want out of a monochrome sensor is um, a shitload of tones, gray tones. But I don't think there's actually a huge benefit over a color sensor. Black and white is also very nostalgic. Um, Hollywood comes to mind, film noir, Citizen Kane, so many great black and white films. Uh, the Lighthouse was amazing. And you know, the TV show Breaking Bad does actually look very good in black and white. Uh, I once downloaded some clips, and some scenes and converted them into black and white and it looked so good. Okay, black and white update, uh, it's July 2020 and uh, I switched to this camera and I probably did a video this year or last year whenever this is out uh, about it and um, so in my experience uh, I stopped using silver effects for Lightroom and now I prefer very clean black and white so I don't like that much noise and shooting with the Leica SL um, I realized how how nice clean black and white uh, images can look like and I don't do extra noise because if we are honest we can never mimic how film looks 
So even though SilverFX is nice, I stopped using it. So at the moment I'm shooting very um, cinematic or clean black and white photographs. And, ah, and so far I don't miss color that much for like, I don't know, for serious stuff. Um, but I'm shooting on my, oh, it's not here in my pocket right now, but I have the GR1 and I use the positive film effect for like snapshots, you know. So yeah, that's my update for July 2020. Okay guys, confession time. Uh, this video actually has been in the making since January 2021 or February. Um, and then I stopped working on this video. And the reason is I didn't feel ready yet. Uh, I think one year is not enough. I think we have to sometimes spend even more time than a year um, to really become a master, at, not a master, but gain enough knowledge and experience to talk about a topic. Uh, for me, it just, yeah, I wasn't ready yet. Um, but now, I think I have a good understanding how I want to use black and white in my photography. But before I tell you that, uh, I talked to my friend Chris from New Zealand, who is a very talented black and white street photographer. And he's going to share why he shoots black and white. And I think you will learn some few things. And then afterwards, I will tell you how I am going, how I am going to use black and white for my photography or how I'm not going to use it. Um, so I see you after the interview. Basically, the color images that I like are, are more like painting-like. I guess that's where my design background comes in. So it looks more like posters, more like uh, they have ideas. It's more artistic. Uh, even though people say black and white is more artistic, but uh, to me, black and white feels more everyday. And I love, and I like the everyday, right? And um, um, also black and white allows me to uh, put my photographs in different formats easier than color, right? So color, people get all finicky about doing fine prints and, you know, printing and be very careful and the colors and the reproductions. And then um, with black and white for me, it's more, since like, you know, like I told you, it's more like um, uh, contrast and light and shadows. Like I don't care when I put it on a t-shirt or on a poster or in a book the midtones is all just black and white and you know i just love that you know it's it's graphic it's very visual and and your brain does the rest of the the work for you right um and i like that i always wonder what's the what's the what's the matter with black and white because for example in the company that i work with um one of the managers hates black and white photography and he thinks that is a it's 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 not a it's not a um he 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 finds it cheap or he finds it that is very artistic in a very cheesy, bad way, right? And that it doesn't feel premium and stuff like that. And, and, and then there's other people, it's like, why would you shoot for, uh, black and white if the world is in color? Mm -hmm. And all these questions about black and white. And, and it's funny how it, it, it almost seems to me like when I see the interviews of all the photographers that I like, you know, the old photographers from the 50s, 60s, 70s, it seems that they had the different conversation. Like they had the conversation that it was like, why would you shoot color if, if black and white was the thing, right? Um, and I wonder why do we need to question that sort of stuff? Um, why, why, doesn't, why, why do you need to have an answer for it? It's kind of like, uh, it's, it's like you like Coke or Pepsi sort of thing to me, right? It's like, is there a right answer for it? Maybe. I, do I have it? I don't know. I just like Coke better than Pepsi, you know? But when you compose an image, in black and white, it's always a black and white image, right? Because you because you composed it with like subjects to against foregrounds and um, backgrounds and and all of that, considering the the contrasts and the lights and the shadows and all that, right? Whereas in color, I'm actually focusing. Oh, I like that because there's a red bit here and a green bit here, and you know, I try to get out of all of the information that is not adding onto the photos. And yes, and, and, and the black and white adds a little bit more of an, an emotion to it. There's a more poetry, there's a, there's a time, there's a, there's a pace that goes in some of the images that makes you slow down. I don't know if slow down is, is a good word, but, uh, a word, but uh, makes you reflect a bit more, uh, maybe. Um, a, it feels more human in a way that is not perfect and feels more natural and because of that feels more natural feels more um yeah honest
Okay, time to give you my final conclusions. Uh, I'm not going to read off my script. I'm going to do this from my heart. <laughs> and that's the best way, I think, to end this video. So that was um, my black and white challenge in 2020. So the way I'm going to use black and white from now on is how I always used it. I'm just going to trust my intuition. I'm not going to overthink it. Because when I look back at all the photographs that I value the most, um, photographs of people I capture, family members, for example, or moments I want to remember forever, um, I tend to shoot them in black and white, intuitively. Um, the last photograph I took of my German grandfather, that was shot in black and white. The last portraits I took from my Japanese grandfather, they were also black and white. And my favorite photograph of my mother was shot on black and white film. And this photograph here that I took of my wife, um, that's my personal favorite of hers and it's also in black and white. So I think I don't need to overthink it, I'm just going to go by my intuition. There are projects that require you to take photos in color, but there are also projects that work so much better or are much stronger visually, visually when you shoot them in monochrome. When it comes to street photography and just documenting daily life, I'm pretty much going to stick to color. That's just what I enjoy more when it comes to snap shooting. But I'm not going to be too hard on myself and, you know, shoot the occasional monochrome picture if I want to. I guess if I had to sum it up, I would say that monochrome photography to me is for preserving memories or freezing time and making my neurons in my brain <laughs> do the rest of the work in recollecting the memories I have when I look at a monochrome photograph. And color will always be important to me to describe life, to describe scenes, to describe mood, color mood, color temperature. Yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> now would be the perfect time to sell you my new photo book. <laughs> But the truth is, I haven't finished it yet, so I made a photo book out of this project and I'm calling it A Year Without Color. And it basically shows all the photographs um, that I took in 2020. Now, not all of them, of course, but the important ones. And because I had no clue that 2020 would be such a crazy year, um, I think it's also, for me, it's also a diary, a visual diary of how I processed um, the pandemic and um, not being able to do photography the way I wanted to do it and so this is a very personal book of mine it has a pretty wide selection of different subject matter but I'm treating it more like a visual diary so it's it has a chronological order but I'm honestly not too happy with the sequencing and the design um, I like my uh, cover photo I'm pretty sure this is going to be final but this is also a test book and as you can see it's it's misaligned it's not really how i envisioned it um, and also i would love to make this a little smaller this is a little big and it's going to be more expensive to ship it that way you know for me 2021 was all about moving away from the city um, renovating our house becoming a father uh, just dealing with a lot of adult stuff and on top of it trying to still run my youtube channel successfully so i want to ask you guys for help uh, if you want to support this project or become part of it um, by helping me with the sequencing um, i would need some help with the design and very important also uh, i would love to have someone on board who can maybe show me or give me advice how to distribute the book so if you want to help me uh, shoot me an email at this address and just let me know what you have in mind, what, what you can do and uh, what you want to get out of it maybe because I don't want to give other people all the work and just lean back. I want to be part of it but um, yeah I just need a little help at the moment. Okay it's getting way too cold here. I, I need to end this video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this and you learned a few things and I appreciate you guys sticking until the end and if you do appreciate the, the kind of effort I put into this video please leave, leave a like because this will help YouTube recognize this video and push it out to more people that haven't seen my channel yet. That would be great. 
Let me know what kind of challenges you are doing yourself. It would be cool to hear how you guys are working on your skills. And yeah, see you next time. Take care, stay safe. God bless. Bye guys. I don't know what, what is it about that, but um, it feels that uh, it be, um, you become you when, when you have no attachments. So therefore it's just you and the camera and the world and flows. And that, that's what you want to, that's the ideal, right?